Let's talk about the new update that came in at as the top of the hour at 10 a.m. Let's show you 45 mile per hour winds that remains consistent from what we've seen so far. We are seeing it moving at nine miles per hour towards the northwest and pressure is still above 1000. Here is what we're going to be watching for this steering back towards the west. That's all because it's guided by a high pressure that's camped out into really the mid Atlantic, the northeast. That's what's pushing it back towards the west and drifting over northwestern uh, the portion of the Bahamas, so Nassau, and then into the east coast of Florida. One of the updates that we've got is now a hurricane watch for this portion of the northern Bahamas and the east coast of Florida, and this is why by Wednesday, we're expected it to, to get to 75 mile per hour sustained winds. That's going to be Wednesday evening, and that would put it as a cat one. Then it loses its subtropical characteristics, and it is just Hurricane Nicole at that point if it reaches that threshold. So here's what's new in orange. All of that is new as of this latest advisory. So what you're seeing for the Bahamas, whether it's Nassau or towards Freeport, they are under that hurricane watch along with Volusia and Brevard County, Florida. So that takes you from Daytona Beach, the southern end, all the way through the Space Coast and then down towards Melbourne and even along here and the northern side of Miami. You got Fort Lauderdale and West Palm Beach. Vero Beach. You have many large cities along the eastern coast under that hurricane watch, and they're also under a storm surge watch. So we're going to be seeing uh, the winds really drive this in throughout this event. We've talked about how broad this field will be, but also another thing to talk about is how this is actually going to coincide with the full moon. So that's going to play into the tide cycle, which could exacerbate some concerns. One area I want to highlight real quickly is you see this blue line that is snaking just south of uh, Jacksonville. That is the largest river in Florida. Something that we saw massive flooding from. That's the St. John's River with Hurricane Ian. Well, they're still dealing with issues. Now you're talking about a storm surge and heavy rainfall training over that area. That's going to be a threat from Jacksonville to the south. Looking at flash flooding coincides with the east coast of Florida. So it's going to be the I-95 corridor, the Turnpike, and all those major cities, Melbourne, Fort Pierce, uh, West Palm Beach, down to Fort Lauderdale. Let's track it out. This is our exclusive Fox weather model, and it'll show you that steering mechanism as it gets guided back towards the west. This is that area of Freeport by Bahamas. You can see that center of circulation right here, and they're going to be taking the brunt of that. There's those heavy thunderstorms and winds that are driven in, and then notice the timestamp. That center of circulation now navigating towards Port St. Louis, uh, Port St. Lucie, I should say, and Vero Beach. Notice the timestamp up here. That is overnight on Thursday, so this could be uh, potentially a late into the week storm system as it makes landfall. It could be overnight, Kiana, which poses its own threat because we're looking at some substantial rainfall with right now what is subtropical storm. Nicole. I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.